Which is the right major for you, mechanical or biomedical engineering? That's what we will be talking about today, starting right now. Obviously, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to our passion, but a lot of the times we don't know what that is exactly until later on in our life. And so that's why it's critical to understand all of the direct implications that come with choosing a specific major. Don't worry, because I got you covered. I'll be going over all the similarities and differences between the curriculum, job outlook, salary, and prestige for mechanical and biomedical engineering so you can make a more educated decision for yourself and not have any regrets about dropping 100 grand on the wrong degree after graduation. Now I'm gonna tell you a secret that I never told anyone before. The major I declared when I was applying to universities in high school was biomedical engineering. But I ended up switching over to mechanical engineering for specific reasons and that was sort of the motivation behind why I made this video. Did I make the right decision by switching from biomedical to mechanical engineering? Well, I don't know. You will have to stick around a bit to find out. Let's begin with an easy question. If you've taken biology and anatomy and physiology in high school, did you enjoy any of the content related to cells, tissues, and organ systems of the human body? If your answer is yes, and you also enjoy physics class, then it's a very good sign that biomedical engineering might be for you. But obviously there are additional factors you should consider, which we will be talking about shortly. Now, if you hated biology and anatomy, but you enjoy the mechanics and circuits portion of physics class, then mechanical engineering might be a better choice for you. Again, this is just a very preliminary evaluation to at least point you in the right direction of either biomedical or mechanical engineering respectively. Now, in order to determine whether biomedical or mechanical engineering is a better fit for you, we must first know exactly what these two things are. So what the hell is biomedical engineering? It's essentially a specialized discipline that seeks to create state-of-the-art healthcare products such as medical equipment, devices, and medicines through medical research and engineering for treating injuries and diseases. As a biomedical engineer, you will leverage knowledge spanning mechanical, electrical, materials engineering, and computer science, develop things like artificial limbs, biomaterials that are compatible with the human body, pacemakers, ECMO machines, 3D printed organs, and even drug delivery methods for treating cancers. Now, what in the world is mechanical engineering? Simply put, it's one of the oldest and a very broad branch of engineering that focuses on the design, analysis, and manufacturing of mechanical systems to create products for virtually every industry, including aerospace, automotive, construction, consumer electronics, defense, food, medical, and energy. As a mechanical engineer, you will use your knowledge of physics, math, design, and programming to develop things like HVAC systems, airplanes, cars, manufacturing equipment, satellites, and even working together with biomedical engineers to design prosthetic arms or with doctors to create surgical robots. We now have a general idea of what you'll be doing as a biomedical and mechanical engineer. So what kind of classes will you be taking for these two majors? As you probably can guess, both biomedical and mechanical engineers take the general set of engineering core courses during their freshman and sophomore year, like math, which includes calculus one and calculus two, multivariate calculus, differential equations, statistics, and some linear algebra. They also take physics one, which is mechanics, and physics two, which is electricity and magnetism, as well as chemistry, which might focus a bit more on the organic aspect for biomedical engineering and the inorganic aspect for mechanical engineering. Before we continue, I just want to emphasize that the curriculum you're about to see is what you can expect at a top 20 engineering school with the standard four-year curriculum and that the programs will vary slightly from school to school. Moving on to the common engineering courses between these two majors, you will have to take engineering mechanics, circuits, programming with a common language such as MATLAB, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, and an introductory design course intended to give you a basic understanding of the process of converting a product from concept through design and deployment under time and budget constraints. From this point on, starting in your junior year, the courses between these two majors begin to diverge, but what you will see is that a lot of what biomedical engineering students learn, mechanical engineering students also learn, except that the name of the courses might be slightly different. So as a biomedical engineering major, 
you will take a course related to the principles of molecular cell biology and biotechnology that introduces things like molecular building blocks, energetics, transport, metabolism, nucleic acids, gene expression, and genetics through lectures and labs. Moving on to your junior year, you will generally take a systems physiology course introducing topics like homeostasis and neural, muscle, respiratory, cardiovascular, renal, endocrine, gastrointestinal, and metabolic physiology. Another course you will take includes signals and controls that covers things like signals, systems, and feedback control with an emphasis on biomedical problems using analytical and computational methods, including linear time invariant systems and continuous and discrete time, Laplace and Fourier representations, transfer functions, pool zero analysis, stability, convolution, and sampling. This course will be followed by two courses called Biomedical Measurements 1 and 2. Biomedical Measurements 1 is designed to develop skills for collecting and analyzing biomedical measurements and learning proper usage of electronic equipment, including oscilloscopes, function generators, and DACs. Biomedical Measurements 2, on the other hand, will focus on labs designed to develop basic instrumentation and analysis skills for physiological and biological measurements. Emphasis will be placed on techniques involving light such as spectroscopy and microscopy and sound such as ultrasound. Like all engineering majors, biomedical engineering students will also propose and complete a senior design project with a small team in an area of biomedical engineering such as biomedical instrumentation, biosensors, tissue engineering, biological signal processing, biological modeling and simulation, clinical imaging, or informational systems. You will also have the choice to choose three or four biomedical engineering electives and several professional electives from a list of courses based on your personal interests. To give you a sense of what options will be available to you, this is a list of electives that my school offered. Now moving on to the mechanical engineering courses, during sophomore year you will take intro to computer aided design that will teach you how to use most likely SOLIDWORKS or Creo to create 2D technical drawings and 3D models. You'll be given the opportunity to further develop your skills during junior year in a class called product design where you will design and prototype a physical product using CAD simulation tools, microcontrollers, and various manufacturing techniques. Another course you should expect to take is Manufacturing Processes that introduces a wide range of manufacturing operations including machining, injection molding, casting, and 3D printing. This class will also explain the fundamental principles and practices of manufacturing at scale. You will also be required to take a mechanics and materials course covering stress and strain, axial and shear loading, torsion of shafts and thin wall tubes, stress within and deflection of bending beams, and combined loadings. You will most likely also take a course called material science that introduces how solid materials deform and fail at the microscopic level, strengthening mechanisms, heat treatment, phase diagrams, defect structures, and nucleation and growth. As I mentioned earlier, both majors take Mechanics 1, which focuses on statics of particles and rigid bodies, but mechanical engineering majors will need to take Mechanics 2, which introduces engineering dynamic concepts like linear and angular momentum, kinematics and kinetics, energy methods, and vibrations. You'll also take Heat Transfer that will teach you how to design heat exchangers and the different modes of heat transfer including conduction, convection, and radiation. Similar to biomedical measurements class that biomedical engineering students take, mechanical engineering majors have something similar called measurements and instrumentation class. What this class teaches is how to design and operate experiments involving mechanical measurements using mechanical and electric transducers for measuring flow, pressure, temperature, velocity, strain, and force as well as constructing electric circuits for static and dynamic analog signal conditioning. You will also learn about data acquisition and how to analyze huge amounts of experimental data. Finally, Senior Capstone Design class will be the culmination of your undergrad studies and involve planning and completing a project with a team to design and manufacture a product containing electromechanical components to solve a problem in some area of mechanical engineering. You would typically also be required to choose three to four advanced electives from a list of classes. And for any of you who are interested, this is the list of courses that we could take at my school. To recap, studying both biomedical and mechanical engineering would be equally challenging, but what we can observe is that it would be a lot harder for a biomedical engineering student to apply for mechanical engineering jobs 
unless it was directly related to medical applications, whereas a mechanical engineering graduate would be able to apply to virtually every industry just because its curriculum is so general. Let's assume you're currently studying mechanical engineering and you wanted to work on things like prosthetic arms, hip implants, medical devices, or tissue engineering. You would only be required to take several additional biomedical engineering courses, such as systems physiology, molecular cell biology, and biomedical engineering measurements because materials, mechanics, and product design are things you're already very familiar with. Now, I'm willing to wager all of my money in my bank that you want to find the highest paying job possible after graduation. So let's talk about how much biomedical and mechanical engineers actually make annually and what does the current and future job outlook look like for these two types of engineers? Let's begin with the salary breakdown for biomedical engineers. We see that the median salary is $91,410, while the lowest 25% and the highest 25% made $70,990 and $118,020 respectively. Obviously, things like years of experience and work location will contribute to this salary gap. So someone with 10 years of experience working in San Jose or Boston will probably be amongst the top 5% of earners. One thing that stands out to me is the salary outlook, which plateaued starting in 2012, but starting in 2016, it grew by a whopping 6.4% in three years, which is fantastic. Extrapolating this data and considering the state of the pandemic, I think the future for biomedical engineers is as bright as can be in the foreseeable future. The number of jobs in 2020 was 19,300 and it's expected to see a 6% increase in jobs between the years 2020 and 2030. U.S. News gave biomedical engineering an overall score of 5.7, but make of it what you will and take it with a grain of salt. Now moving on to mechanical engineering, we see that the median salary is $88,430, while the lowest 25% and the highest 25% made $70,280 and $111,980 respectively. The median is slightly lower than biomedical engineering, but the difference is pretty negligible. Someone in San Jose with several years of experience would still be making around $125,000. The salary outlook looks very constant, which isn't surprising given the diverse and versatile nature of mechanical engineering. This also explains why there were almost 300,000 jobs available in 2020, which is 16 times higher than the number of available biomedical engineering jobs. So what does this actually mean? Well, it means that you are 16 times less likely to look like this than a biomedical engineer. But in all seriousness, job security is something you will not have to worry about as a mechanical engineer. And US News gave mechanical engineering a 6.8 out of 10. Aside from the curriculum, salary, and job outlook, the last component we'll look at is prestige. For some people, it's all about the respect. So the way I've defined prestige is how well known is the company you work at. And I assume that the larger the company, the more prestige it has. For all intents and purposes, we'll assume that the job title is not correlated with prestige. Consequently, I have evaluated prestige solely based on a number of top 50 Fortune 500 companies that offer mechanical and biomedical engineering jobs. It came down to the wire, but mechanical engineering ultimately had the upper hand over biomedical engineering with 18 out of the 50 companies offering related jobs, including Amazon, ExxonMobil, Apple, Alphabet, Ford, Chevron, GM, Microsoft, Marathon, Valero Energy, General Electric, Dell, Johnson & Johnson, Raytheon, Boeing, Intel, Facebook, and P&G. By contrast, only 6 out of the 50 companies offer biomedical engineering jobs, including Amazon, McKesson, Cardinal Health, General Electric, Johnson & Johnson, and P&G. So we can say at the bare minimum that the amount of prestige that comes with mechanical engineering is somewhat more than biomedical engineering. For any biomedical engineers watching this video, please don't take this the wrong way. This was just a quick and dirty way of quantifying how these two majors stack up against each other based on large companies. All right, summarizing everything we talked about, the curriculum for mechanical engineering and biomedical engineering is very similar in terms of difficulty. Biomedical engineering classes are noticeably more specific and limited to medical applications, while mechanical engineering classes are very general and are related to a wide array of applications. 
Moving on to salary, biomedical engineers and mechanical engineers make a very similar amount of money. The salary outlook for biomedical engineers has a slightly higher growth potential than mechanical engineers based on the data that we saw. But the job market for mechanical engineering is 16 times larger than biomedical engineering, with almost 300,000 jobs compared to only 19,000 jobs. The projected job outlook between the years 2020 and 2030 for these two fields is the same at around 7%. Finally, as a mechanical engineer, you will have many more opportunities to work at big name companies than biomedical engineers if that is something you are interested in. At the end of the day, we all want to pick the right major that we can build a career out of and enjoy doing for a lifetime. There's not really a right or wrong answer when it comes to picking mechanical or biomedical engineering. I switched from biomedical to mechanical engineering during my sophomore year because I had absolutely no idea what my passion was and I wanted to play my cards right, so mechanical engineering was a safer bet for me with more job security. You might be someone who already knows that your passion is medicine or biotechnology and you've already chosen biomedical engineering. I think that's great and I fully endorse your decision. The sky is the limit for biomedical engineering and I think more and more lives will be prolonged and improved because of people like you. If you're someone who's still on a quest of discovering what your passion is, that's perfectly okay. My message to you is, Stick with mechanical engineering. You'll be able to find a job in virtually any industry after graduation, and at a bare minimum, you'll be able to provide for yourself while you discover what you actually love to do. Finally, if you're someone who enjoys both biomedical and mechanical engineering, I strongly recommend going with mechanical engineering to not limit yourself and have all options available to you. If you go with biomedical engineering, it's going to be a lot harder for you to find a job in say the energy or automotive industry straight out of college. You can always take biomedical engineering courses as a mechanical engineering student, or you can find a research position related to say biomechanics or tissue engineering if you foresee yourself wanting to work as a biomedical engineer one day. All right, hopefully this video was able to give you a better idea of which major to choose. And if it did, Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.